And this is where she goes, Mom always used to go to the Bible, and I wanted her so badly. She brings over the Bible, and they do the, like, random flip, find exactly the right phrase thing from Christian movies. It, right. But uh, I wanted her to open it and for it to be cut out, and there was just a giant black dildo in there. <laughs> <laughs> they both just stare at it for a minute, while Steven's like, oh, that's why. I thought she buzzed when she read. That makes sense now. That makes sense. <laughs> Awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because now that's all Netflix will show me. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you, sir. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Pretty good. Stop taking my pills, and I'm just going to read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It's working out great so far. It's been six minutes. <laughs> it sounds medically sound, yes. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched God's Club. Mm -hmm. It's the story of a public school science teacher and his daughter, trying to spread the Christian gospel and also finally expose the conspiracy of medicine taking. <laughs> but uh, things get tricky when they find out that their small town in Vermont is also home to a sleeper cell of teenage atheist terrorist mafia <laughs> members. Something everyone can relate to. It was fun. <laughs> Just another everyday story of every town in America. And Eli... How bad was this movie? Well, if you love those feel-good movies about, like, the black family that moves into the white neighborhood and that neighborhood needs to learn to accept them, but you thought to yourself, fuck, why isn't this about one of the largest majorities in the world? And also, <laughs> you're a Scientologist who wants to kill the mentally ill with bad advice. You will love this <laughs> movie. A very specific audience they were yeah. going for. I'm going to go with one-third Passion of the Christ, one-third Brzezinski documentary, <laughs> and one-third Stephen Baldwin's chromosome. <laughs> I feel like Stephen Baldwin should now be a euphemism for that last stage of high before you pass out. <laughs> oh, guys, Dave is Stephen Baldwining. Just get him on a couch. Get him on a couch. <laughs> it's fine, buddy. Your hands are just the right size. Your hands are just the right size. <laughs> You're not an asshole. <laughs> I'm at a Daniel right now. I'm almost there. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say best worst people who like this movie also liked because it might as well say movies on God awful movies. They liked <laughs> Fireproof, uh -huh. War Room, and God's Not Dead 2. Oh. Only the sequel, though. <laughs> the worst Which of is the two. Really wow. interesting. Uh, can I go with most direct message intended to kill your audience? And that was, it, it was pretty high up there, yeah. This is if Jim Jones had made a YouTube channel. Is one of the, <laughs> all right, everybody, three, two, one, go, yay! <laughs> Spaceship's on its way, y'all. Spaceship's on its way. Also, I think this might win for like, knowing least how the universe works of all the Christian... Because we joke about it and there are moments where we're just like, oh, that's silly. Like, these people don't know who Jesus is. But all of that is taken very literally in this movie. Like, this is someone doing a spoof of our show as a movie almost every step of the way. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and I know the scene that most inspired that particular comment and holy shit because yeah. yeah we see that constantly <laughs> we do like people in america going jesus now he's the one with the beard right and but this movie <laughs> like as soon as they start talking about religion like people don't even know what basic words mean <laughs> it's amazing yeah and the movie has scripted that so badly that they do forget to slide between like what an english speaker knows and what a bible <laughs> right, reader knows. Right. it'll be like oh daniel who who is he? And then it'll be like, butter, what's that? And it's like, no, 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 you. What's this definite article you keep using? I feel like you keep saying the. All right, just run with that for a Fuck second. Fuck off with your fancy college words, boy. 
Well, I guess I, we've all got very important school board meetings that we have to hackle tonight, so we're going to have to speed this up, keep the break short, and when we come back, we'll dig into all the sedate melodrama that is God's Club. Doc, are you sure I can use a Bible instead of my pacemaker? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a proven fact that the Bible helps many people. Uh, well, okay, I, sorry, I, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, they did a study and it's a proven fact that many people feel helped by the Bible at times during things. That, that, that sounds very specifically, like, vague and made up. No, 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 it's a big old study. Tons of people. It was, uh, it was published in the journal. The journal of what? The uh, medicine. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Ha! 20 bucks! I told Fuck. you! Seriously? Okay, okay. How about double or nothing, next guy holds his breath till he dies. You're on. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start this movie by meeting a family in a kitchen. Like, three out of every five movies we've ever reviewed. <laughs> Could we meet them in the goddamn living room for once? Yeah, just to spice things up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so we see the mother and the daughter kitchening, and uh, like all Christian movies, and it's been a while since this has happened, actors are asked to pantomime for three seconds, <laughs> right. and so they're just like banging pots together and being like, working on the railroad, how do people cook? <laughs> and then... Stephen Baldwin shows up looking like the words microwaving a burrito were brought to life. <laughs> Stephen Baldwin stumbles in looking like a home invasion. Yeah, right. If he right. isn't law-abiding citizen, these women, I don't buy this movie at all. <laughs> at all. He looks like Ponyboy heard stay golden corral. <laughs> He looks like he looks like a Chinese guy in whiteface. It's <laughs> like and I have so much. I have so much just about what Stephen Baldwin looks like. He looks like claymation of a fetus developing downs in fast motion. I cannot ever he looks like Gumshoes the Pokemon trying to be a human. And like just in general, it seems like he looks like he caught his wife cheating on Ashley Madison, but hasn't said anything yet. He's just <laughs> right. kind of, and also like a sad pair. Like his waist, <laughs> it's crazy. I don't understand how his waist is about ten feet wider than any other part of his body. Now I'm not saying he's like fat. He's not particularly overweight. He is a little bit. I'm saying he's geometrically impossible for a human being. It's <laughs> yeah, nuts. He's, he's funhouse mirror yeah. sized, not fat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. right, right. <laughs> Now, okay, so, and he is looking completely fucking homeless in this shot, and his wife looks at him and says, you can't go to the meeting dressed like that. He's like, I don't want to go to the meeting. She's like, we'll do butt stuff. And he's like, okay, well, I'll go to the meeting. Yeah, she goes, how about some dessert on the way home? And he's like, ooh, you naughty minx. And I'm like, ugh. Yep. <laughs> that is butt sex at Motel 6 for 45 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Yeah, nobody goes to a meeting for ice cream. No, no, <laughs> once, exactly. Once you pass the age of 19, you can buy all the ice cream you want for yourself. So it's always about sex with another person. That's the only thing you can't do yourself. And sometimes you can do yourself. Who's with me, right? <laughs> Roosh V. Oh, God. I'm just trying to keep Phyllis's memory alive. <laughs> Well done, sir. Squish, so yeah, squish, squish, squish. after this very important scene, now we cut, like, basically we just dive headlong into a plot that was already going. Yeah, I missed the beginning of this movie. We learned that, I, I wrote in my notes, did I miss the beginning where we learned who these characters are and what they want and what this is? <laughs> no? We lost a reel? It's cool. <laughs> we clearly did, yeah, because, okay, so we cut straight from meeting the family in the kitchen to heated debate at the school board meeting about the God Club that his wife is starting at the school. <laughs> <sighs> And if, if our, our first, our first, oh, not you too, uh, of the, uh, film happens here where Lorenzo Lamas shows up, uh, as evil, evil atheist dad number one, and he's had enough of this Jesus fella and their Jesus club. Hmm. Nobody has yep. a, a fucking list of shit on Lorenzo what? Lamas. What the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> Nothing. I'm, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it. Give me time. Give me time. This is Antonio Banderas after the AIDS takes effect, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Good, good, no, good. no, I think that's atheist, evil atheist dad number two. Oh, no, okay, so atheist dad number one is, a uh, beard guy. Yes, beard yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his beard is drawn on like a Latina woman's eyebrows. He is fucking <laughs> insane looking. 
it lo- it looks like he drew blonde around the edge of his beard. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, normally that would be like you dyed your beard dark and it came it no, it looks like he very clearly like like you said with like a <laughs> mascara line of blondness around the edge yeah. of his beard. He looks like Paul Bunyan got his high school girlfriend pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like upside down Phyllis Schlafly, and I know, I know. <laughs> trust me. Now, I, 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 I got to say too, because I, I love this exchange. This is the only Christian in the world that wants to do the legal thing, but people are trying to stop him, right? And 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 so, in order to create this bullshit world where somebody actually gives a fuck about their Jesus club, they have to make the atheist complaint into, I find this offensive. Right, that yeah. is just offensive because the boogeyman word of 2016 is offensive. Yeah, right. Because yeah. that's that's the way to dismiss everything now. Is like, hey, man, that's offensive, and it's like, oh, is it offensive or is it brave? Nope, it's just, <laughs> it's just gross. <laughs> or am I a hero? Nope. Nope. You're just <laughs> a dick, and people know now because it's not the 50s. Make America great again. <laughs> yeah, make America great again. <laughs> Also, the other complaint is the atheist parents seem to think they're like, fuck you. My kid's not getting forced into going to your God's club. And the Christian mom's like, okay, well, nobody's forcing anyone to attend. I'm being nice and you're being crazy. I just wanted the atheist family to be like, okay, well, we're starting after school Satan. That's happening. Well, right. And then Baldwin's wife shoots them with a gun. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And that's all that has – because they keep saying over and over in this movie, well, if you want to start a club for a different religion, that'll be fine. And I'm like, yeah, because like there's never been a problem starting an atheist club at a school, has there? Yeah. yeah, all Wooly Willie needs to do is be like, great, I want to start Allah's club. And everyone would be like, great, so no clubs, no clubs this year, burn the school to the ground, burn the yeah, whole school exactly. down, kill all the kids, start over again. All right, yeah. great. Purge everybody, purge in three, two, one, go. Who's purging? Yeah. Also, I just have to point this out because it's one of my favorite moments in the movie. Uh, everyone's like shouting over each other and Stephen Baldwin yeah. says, Everyone needs to calm down like he has a gun. <laughs> the performance right. is him going to stand up and like shoot that Asian woman in the leg and be like, all right, now everyone needs to mashed potatoes. <laughs> Calmer than you are. Calmer than you are. <laughs> Stephen Baldwin looks like he smells like witch hazel all the time. <laughs> So then we get uh, uh, Stephen and his wife driving home, talking about the God Club. Right. And there's just a great moment where he turns to her and he goes, you okay? And I wanted her so badly to be like, no, I'm married to Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I die soon. <laughs> and boy, will she. And I love, too, that, like, you know, he's going like, well, I think maybe this this Bible club's a total waste of time, babe. And she says, this is her answer. She's like... Well, Kid X is worried about getting pregnant, and Kid Y is listening to music that glorifies drugs and violence. That's why they need a Bible study club. Condoms and music. Yeah, 50% of her complaints are in line with Rockets, your decision. (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Also, just a real quick note. She's going to die soon, and we're all real glad about that. But Mom looks like she belongs in a sci-fi special about big spiders. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That's She's the dumb perfect. scientist that won't understand that they want to kill her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is the first movie she's been in that's shot in HD. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> not the first. Not the first. Um, yeah, but, uh, it, and so she's like having this whole like, uh, all I really want is to teach the Bible in public schools to children against their parents' will kind of a moment. And, and Stephen goes like, you know what? I think you're pretty awesome. I think I'm going to kiss you while you're driving. I hope we don't get into a car wreck and die. Meow. But they do. Yeah. It <laughs> was the stupidest dead wife car wreck scene I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot by now. Oh, it's so good. It is the closest to our joke that a movie has gotten. Where he's like, we're going to live forever. And she's like, I know. <laughs> And right before the crash, she's like, "Oh, you sound a little. Do, you sound skeptical. Do you do you not support the Bible Club? I'm talking about." And Bolton says, "Well, I support uh, anything my wife supports." So, ladies, I'm going to manslate that for you. That means no, he does not support it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not a fan. Yeah, yeah. And crash. <laughs> exactly. So now we get him like struggling out of the car, saying "babe" a lot. I swear, I want to go back to this scene and count how many times he says "babe" um, in this yeah. car wreck scene. My notes. 
say stop saying babe about 19 times yeah. throughout this movie. <laughs> it's not just in this scene. It's ridiculous. No, it's throughout. But just Because babe this... dies here and he keeps doing it. <laughs> well, he calls his daughter babe. Then He just instantly transfers from the wife. All of the nicknames to the daughter, which I'm Not totally creepy. in support of. Who's Not with me? Huh? <laughs> this daughter also, is I wrote delicious, my notes here. Calling your wife babe means you deserve a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> I call my wife babe all the time. I do not deserve a car accident. <laughs> but he struggles out of the, out of the car. He goes around the other side. She's laying there and his instinct is to grab her and pull her out of the car. I wrote, "Okay, I'm just going to twist your neck in a sharp circle, okay, babe?" <laughs> babe. 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 I'm going to cover your nose and mouth at the same time, okay? <laughs> Breathe through my hands. <laughs> to be fair though, their injuries appear to be briar patch related so it seems kind of minor like when he comes up on her i can understand that and yeah. he's like oh, are you okay are you gonna you're gonna be okay and she can't answer so probably no yeah. and uh then she starts talking a little bit and she can't feel her legs mm -hmm. and again this is probably because he aggravated her bad spinal injury by yanking her out of an upside down car <laughs> maybe yeah, yeah. Yeah, but hey, she doesn't need legs. Legs are overrated. Stephen Baldwin was like, okay, your pussy's still good? We can talk about that later. Now's not the time. <laughs> and, like, honestly, that would have been a step up in the dialogue department. The, this is the actual line that they give Stephen Baldwin to deliver in this scene. He says, you're fine, my love. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. I just delivered that with more passion and believability. That he 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 delivered it like an actor about to run on stage. You're fine, my love. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. You're fine, my love. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. That was his performance. Steve, we're rolling. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Good take, everybody. Take a bow. Good take. I'm gonna go to craft services. Nobody get near the mac and cheese. I'm gonna do weird things to it. <laughs> It's not going to be food when I'm done. It's not food anymore for anybody. Except for me. <laughs> so, and of course, she, as, as she lay there dying, wants him to pray with her, but he just can't. Which, again, it's such a theme in these movies. Why can't people... I could pray. If a dying man stumbled in right now, I'd be like, ashes, dust, happy birthday. There you go. I figured it out. <laughs> Right, but he can't bring himself to pray, and apparently there's a clock a ticking from the time she asks. So he's got like ten seconds before she dies from there. Yeah, yeah. and I wrote in my notes. This is really sad. That actress had to touch her face to Stephen Baldwin's face. <laughs> I bet they negotiated that like HBO nudity. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to be three seconds of your face on a, on Stephen Baldwin's face, and she's just in a boardroom. Two seconds. <laughs> Two seconds, and I immediately get a chemical shower. We can do that. Great. We can do that. <laughs> and, and I want to say, okay, so like for the rest of this movie, Stephen Baldwin's character is going to be dealing with the guilt of not having prayed with uh, his wife before she died, but he never expresses any guilt about like, trying to make out with her while she was driving, thus causing the accident that killed her. No. Nor does he ever take a moment to be like, man, God crashed my car. He very explicitly, and we will get to this scene, is like, you know, that car crash really made me start thinking about how awesome God is. Yes. Because <laughs> I, was, I was planning this elaborate plot, you know, I was going to need an alibi, but uh, no, this worked out great. I just had to... I didn't really like Kelly Wright until she kicked me in the balls, but then when she did, I was like, she's good people. <laughs> right. She's good people. What? <laughs> So now we cut to their house, okay? And this is where we meet the daughter, and I just have this feeling like there's going to be some um, some disturbing notes about the daughter before we're we're all well, done. She was Here's 18 when this was filmed. I checked. Oh, was she really? Yeah, after I finished, but I checked. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in. Well, wait. I want to take a moment. If this movie didn't want me to say the things about this daughter that I am about to say, trigger warning. Uh, <laughs> Don't make her wet in more than three quarters of the scene. Right. She is either wet from a pool or covered in sweat. Look, I, I get a hint when a movie sends me a hint, all right? I know what I'm supposed to feel about this girl. She's having olive oil fights with people. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah, basically every time we see this character, she's sweaty. And this is also where we get the least realistic moment in this entire movie. You show uh, Stephen Baldwin doing a crossword puzzle. Oh. oh, actually, fun fact, I believe he was just coloring in the squares. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you if we had gotten a reverse shot, he would have been like, solved it. It's all black now. <laughs> Good job, Steve. 
This is a Good really job. easy Sudoku. You just, <laughs> just dark it. And <laughs> by the way, learn to fold a fucking newspaper to do the crossword. It's like flopping everywhere. It's a weird angle. In a New York subway, you'd get beat to death while everybody <laughs> watched and cheered the person beating you to death. <laughs> Yeah, he's got it rolled up like he's about to punish a dog. (laughs) Yeah, right, right, exactly. So what we're learning in this story is that he's not, like, since his wife died, there for his daughter, and he's too mopey and shit. Yeah, she wants him to, like, not wear the same clothes for three weeks, which is rude, I thought. I mean, maybe he owns uh, three shirts and one pair of pants, and he's on a nine-week cycle. Lots of people run it like that. (laughs) That's perfectly... And it works just fine, as I understand it. (laughs) And this is uh, when uh, Corbin Burnson shows up, proving that he just didn't invest the L.A. law money very well. (laughs) I wrote my notes. It's the guy from L.A. law. I'm going to see how this movie works out before I'm disappointed. (laughs) (laughs) Because he comes in to be like, hey, man, look, it's been 12 weeks. Your wife's dead. She's not getting any deader. Let's get out of (laughs) here. There's also this weird moment where it's supposed to establish that they're not just, like, co-workers. They're also buddies, where Stephen Baldwin is like, maybe I won't go back at all. Maybe I'll stay here and slowly turn into a big pile of laundry. And he goes, <laughs> you want some fries with that, fatty? And it's supposed to be a buddy joke, but he says it with such hatred <laughs> that, like, you can tell they had to cut and then, like, tell a knock-knock joke to Stephen Baldwin so he could be like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> My damn foot out of the door. <laughs> so, but yeah, but Corbin Burnson is apparently his boss. We will never really completely understand his boss structure here, but Corbin Burnson is one of his bosses, and he's there to tell him his dead wife leave is up. He has to come back to work now. Right. And we learn that he's a teacher, which I want to point out at this point in the movie, we don't know he's a science teacher. And I just wrote in my notes, what kind of teacher are we supposed to think Stephen fucking Baldwin is? <laughs> he lacks the gravitas of a gym teacher. So he <laughs> certainly <laughs> looks like he's never made it all the way through a Little League game without being ejected. <laughs> <laughs> Also, if you close your eyes here, Baldwin sounds like Jennifer Tilly with laryngitis. That, uh, he uh, he always sounds kind of like that very to Very much me, like yeah. that. So, <laughs> Easier to jerk off to that way. <laughs> I, I found it that way, yes. Um, strong disagree. So now we get the... Um, <laughs> that made it harder? <laughs> <laughs> now we get the uh, the getting back out there montage, right, where he has to clean himself up. Keep in mind, we're like three minutes into this fucking movie. Um, and, and he walks into the bathroom, looks into the mirror... Seems to be as disappointed as I would be to see Stephen Baldwin standing there looking back at him. Why can't I be more like Alec? I hate him so much. <laughs> Fuck. This is also the greatest moment I've ever had with Anna watching one of these movies. So he's shaving and Anna turns to me. She hasn't left the room yet. And she goes, I thought he was brain damaged by the car accident. <laughs> and I go, no, Anna. That's just how Stephen Baldwin talks. And she looks at me and goes, sad. And leaves the room. (laughs) And it's 100% true. So they're shooting for montage of getting ready type stuff, but they only have like three things. Um, Like apparently they didn't have enough tape for full blown montage. So they just show them shaving, ironing, and ordering a pizza. Why would that be part of your morning routine? Like halfway through the shaving. (laughs) He was like, I'm having a little snacky. And again. Yeah, yeah, I do that during It's the most in my realistic part of this movie is that Stephen Baldwin can't leave the house without ordering and eating two full pizzas. <laughs> His body's 70% grease. It's like water. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> so then he goes back to work. Um, it, it, he starts his first class off since his, since his wife dies. And of course, this is another one of those, this is what the atheists are mad about kind of moments. So he says like, uh, as many of you know, my wife died tragically. I'd like to start today with a moment of silence in honor of my dead wife. If that's okay, if that's not your thing, don't worry about it. So if that's not your thing, scream real loud. Um, right. <laughs> I wanted one kid to just be like, I told the witch doctor, he told me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> a moment of silence is everyone's thing. I've yeah, never right. heard of anybody who doesn't have Tourette's not doing a moment <laughs> of silence. For anything. Well, except evil atheist, uh, really hot black girl Mm -hmm. who walks out angrily at this point. Yeah. (laughs) Very angry. Dead wife my ass. Well, wait. I have a theory. Maybe it's... Is it that 
and I'm just throwing this out there. I don't want to be accused of anything. I don't know. I'm asking questions. Do black people not believe in silence? Because that would explain several movies I've been to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm asking questions. I'm a skeptic. And that makes it okay. So <laughs> or he, maybe she was just planning ahead because the national anthem was about to start. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it being a Kaepernick thing. That could be. I it. support Colin Kaepernick. So no, I, but yeah, but but again, this is this is the moment that they give us in this fucking movie is that he just wants to have a moment of silence in honor of his wife, but those damn atheists get all pissed off about it. Um, yes. So then we cut to the daughter, who's also you know back to school for the first time because apparently she was also out twelve weeks for bereavement read leave um and we were going to meet three characters that we have to know here one is her friend who i don't i think her name is piggy 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 and the other two are the bullies that pick on piggy 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 yep that's all we need to know from this scene and they call her piggy because her dad recently bought a pig farm that was what they went with for the movie what? Like, if her dad bought a regular farm, would they be calling her, like, produce, produce, produce? Like, I don't understand. Here, c- cows, chickens, large <laughs> yeah, agricultural yeah, you know. complex. So, and, but, but also, like, it's not like there's ever a reason why the dad would have bought a pig farm. And she said it was, like, last week that he did it or whatever. I have a theory. I think they were supposed to say, here, piggy, piggy, because that actress was supposed to be cast as fat. And then they didn't cast a fat actress, so they were like, my dad bought a pig farm. Good, good save. Good save. <laughs> what did he do last today, earlier? That's perfect. No, this is the only thing in that character's uh, backstory that I wrote before I made the script. So he, pig yeah, farm, see. perfect. We can use it. Right. So anyway, so that's all we get from that. So then we get perpetually sweaty daughter meeting dad, you know, on the front stoop after school where they so they can have one of many awkward dad daughter moments where it's obvious steven wants to fuck this girl right and basically their answer is so how was your first day pretty good how was your first day turns out atheists don't like silence morning's weird huh? <laughs> <laughs> also this is where he points out that mom's death strengthened him and there's this very weird moment so he goes you know hey he's like oh i realize that jesus is blah 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 who cares But he goes, you know, as she was dying, there was this. And she goes, glow? And I wrote in my notes, teenage girl has seen a lot of people die, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Going in the blanks, right? And you felt alive for the first time? Excited? (laughs) Boom. Give me a second. I'm going to go inside and master my gift. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. I thought we were going in an interesting serial killer direction, but we were not. Um, Instead, we were learning about how losing his wife taught him how awesome God is for killing his wife. Yeah. yeah. My Christian wife dying showed me that God is truly faithful. Yeah. That that's what? the message we're getting here. And that leak on Ashley Madison showed me that mom wasn't faithful. So, well, yeah. <laughs> faithful in the way that Glenn Close is faithful. You know what I'm saying? Sure, God will <laughs> jump out of a tub at you. I think that's what he's saying. <laughs> so now we cut to um to club sign up day at the school. And I just, I have to point this out, right? Cause like they're collecting signatures for the God Club or whatever. And they have this really nice printed out sign and everything. Everyone else looks like Brian hand drew it because the pan <laughs> shot had already started. And he's like, fuck other signs for the clubs. They told me that. <laughs> He's just, it's just the word chess scrawled in not capital letters <laughs> with a pencil <laughs> on a poster yeah. board. Yeah. And it's like chess, French, hiking genocidal deity just your basic <laughs> school clubs these all belong together on a normal list don't circle any weird one that's fine yeah <laughs> that's the message we're getting here and this is also where we meet the two dorky kids i don't know that they ever get names um they, i don't think they get names but do you guys the first line one of them says is i kind of want to own a raccoon <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the open for this character yeah, I, they don't go back i have no idea why you would have that I think it's nice that this movie made our backstory. It's it's nice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was really sympathetic with this character too, and not just because of the lime green uh, Bermuda shorts he was wearing, but he goes, "Hey, let's go mess with the Bible man," and I'm like, "I'm in, I'm, I'm in. in, like yeah. these kids." Which made the rest of this movie super confusing because either the rest of these characters' interaction are a 
brilliant way to fuck with Stephen Baldwin's character, or they forgot they wrote that line in. I, I, I guess. Think it's the latter, which is a bummer, but if it's the former, all of the other lines make perfect sense, and it's the most brilliant comedy ever written into a film. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm thinking somehow that this wasn't the most brilliant comedy ever <laughs> no, written. I don't so, think so. Yeah, so they go up to Stephen Baldwin and his daughter who are doing the Bible Club thing, and they're looking through the Bible, and they're like, whoa, there were weapons in there? That's cool. Like, there's a very strong, hey, kids, the Bible is cool message throughout this movie. Oh, throughout this whole movie is Stephen Baldwin, his arms crossed across his chest and his hat back on backwards, being like, I got a little story to tell you about the Bible. <laughs> I have exactly that in my notes. in my arms. <laughs> I have that exact image written down in my notes later in the film. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to point this out and then the camera pans over to the daughter who looks at the guys like mm, I'll fuck the shit out of you and then it pans back to the kids that is the choice this movie made <laughs> right you don't pan to the girl going like mm, yeah I'm a naughty girl and then pan back to the kids being like wow this is a weird way to pitch a school club they made that choice. Their movie. They tur- They chose to show a shot of her. In their defense, Eli, I don't think there was any way to pan over to that daughter without you putting those words into her into her. That's mouth true. It could have been head, at the so. mom's funeral, and I would have been like, "That's inappropriate. Come on." <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at the camera. <laughs> she clearly wants to fuck that pallbearer. Yeah. Um. So yeah. It, and it, so the kids, the dorky kids, are like, "Yeah, we'll go to your Bible club." And the one kid goes, aren't we, weren't we supposed to mess with him? He's like, wait until after the movie's over and we're going to totally fuck with him. We'll get him. Trust me. Yeah. It's a long con. It's a long <laughs> con. <laughs> the day he adopts me as his son, I'll turn around and be like, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we see Victor in the background. Oh, yeah. One Direction. Yes, I call him, he looks like a Jonas brother got fucked by the werewolves from Twilight. So I call him <laughs> Teen Pregnancy Wolf throughout this movie. <laughs> oh, you guys are talking about Pert Plus. Yes, Pert, Pert Plus. Plus. I'm, I call him Pert Plus throughout. <laughs> and he wants to go over and talk to the daughter, but he just can't bring himself to do it. And the daughter was kind of cute, but this guy was way more fuckable. Yeah, she just looks like Casey Anthony got away with it. <laughs> I mean, she did get away with it, but like she got away with it. Like, she like nobody like found happened. the body. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Too soon? We've had so, so much stuff in between. It, yeah, no, a while. In, you gotta it's be. It's been in the a clear bunch of now. tragedies since. <laughs> let's all be let's all be fair and draw our lines in the right spot. <laughs> so at the very end of that that scene, we saw that the long haired kid kind of liked the girl. So we follow that thread like a cat saw a laser. This whole script is like a fucking <laughs> dog in a squirrel factory. It's like, oh, yeah. we're talking about that now. Um, so we get the scene where, like, she's in the school trying to study at some point in the future, and One Direction walks in to talk to her. Yeah. He's like, have yeah. you seen my great hair? Pretty much no fuss. So, you know, <laughs> hand job? What are we doing? <laughs> I was hoping for that. But no, she doesn't want to talk to him because he's got a girlfriend named Trudy. Right. And. They seem confused about the plot of this movie in this scene. He's like, yeah, wait, right? so do I have a girlfriend? And she's like, I don't know, man. Steven, <laughs> Steven keeps eating my script like a goat. Like, we can't put things down around him. It's very upsetting. Just go until it's been enough time. Is that Garnier Fructis? Yeah, I just put it in there. I'm going to shower eventually. I'm your Venus. I'm your Venus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so now we we uh, cut to dad and daughter at the at the finest. Ruby Tuesdays in all the land. Um, yeah, th- on a lovely date at the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually at Handmade Burger Co. That's what it says on the outside. And I'm pretty sure I looked this up. I mean, maybe I'm right, but I'm pretty sure that only exists in the UK. So all the main characters went to England. For dinner at the same time in this scene is what's mm-hmm. happening. Yep. That was Makes filmed sense. in California. That's weird. Um, so, yeah. So they're sitting there saying, like, you know, like, so how about the plot? How do you think it's coming along? Well, I think the plot is coming along very well. The mom's dead, and there we, we started the Bible club. Uh, it's, I think we're doing well. 
Right. And then the friend walks over because mm-hmm. apparently Piggy Piggy was also there, but she was just like in the bathroom taking a power shit, getting ready for another <laughs> handmade burger. <laughs> so she sits down and she's like, and then the two girls immediately start talking about boys like just in front of her dad they start talking about how wet their pussies are it's just like oh my god he's so fucking hot right oh, i'll just fucking get my hand in there in between his butt cheeks and just slide it back and forth like i'm trying to clear a debit card and he's like what are you girls saying what are you girls talk about again I, I don't think that's what they were actually saying eli i think once again you've projected lines onto these two you characters. watch the movie i'm getting a lot of negative feedback people watch this movie you tweet Read it, Noah. The subtext, just because I'm the Roger Ebert of this fucking <laughs> trinity, I can see beneath the words. I'm the Werner Herzog of God. Because <laughs> I killed a guy. Well, that's... A- <laughs> Did Werner Herzog kill a guy? I feel I like he killed a guy. You wouldn't be surprised if it turned out Werner Herzog killed a guy. <laughs> for fun. For sport. Well, he fed that one guy to that bear, right? It was important for the movie, though. It really, it yeah. really did make the flick. So, Clincher. yeah. So, all the characters apparently in this movie happen to be at Handmade Burger Co. at the same time. But this is only a pretext to allow evil atheist dad to notice that Stephen Baldwin's there and go give him some shit for that moment of silence earlier. Yeah, and this is the first thing he said to him since his wife died. So he's like, hey, sorry to hear about your wife. Also, what the fuck's with not talking for 30 seconds in a row? (laughs) What is this, Saudi Arabia? (laughs) Get your church out of my school. (laughs) And of course, Stephen Baldwin has his... I thought we were in America moment. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. (laughs) This movie. Yeah. Unbelievable. Actually, no, I think you're in Europe because this restaurant only exists in Europe. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm sure I, there's got to be one in California. Now that you that's where they but filmed I, it. I really, yeah, but... I looked it up. I was like, oh, what's that? I want to find out where they filmed this. Heath, can you not be the Neil deGrasse Tyson of burger joints for Christian movies? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, the In-N-Out burger only uses two patties. They cook them for... Heath, it's been 45 minutes. We'll get to the movie. Well, it we'll get it, to it, the movie. <laughs> It was an in and out. I would have known like what town they were in specifically. <laughs> <laughs> love those. So yeah. So and I also love this little throwaway line at the end. Like the atheist dad is all angry and demands to know about his moment of silence, and he's like, uh, "Well, this isn't the time or the place. So if you want to have a rational conversation any time, and of course atheists never want to have rational conversations, so he storms off all pissy for Heathrow." <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay, so then we get the the two evil atheist dad plotting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This scene is so goddamn bizarre. Yeah, basically this scene is nothing in the rules says a dog can't start a Bible club. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So Lorenzo Lamas and uh, who I'm calling Michael Ian Black with scurvy, are uh, atheists plotting together. His teeth are ground down. He's having a lot of trouble. And it's like they're about to take over a birding station in Oregon, (laughs) atheistically, somehow. Well, yeah, I mean, because they're saying, like, well, what are we going to do about this? And Lorenzo Lamas' character is a lawyer because he's bad. Um, So he's like, uh, well, unfortunately, the law is on their side. Like, well, then what are we pissed about? Something else, I'm sure. Meanwhile, cut to Victor, the son, the the, the kid with the long hair, looking like they just said, we're going to have to rape the daughter and not just once. Yeah, it literally (laughs) does, like, a pan zoom into him, like, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So now we have to follow this, you know, we have to reinforce how difficult it is to start a Christian-affiliated group in America. So now we get the scene where Stevie is at the... uh, Okay, so, like, Corbin Bernstein is his boss, but so is this black lady. I don't know who's who or whatever. This school is 98% principals. I guess... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, three principles for every teacher. Um, so, but she's telling him that she doesn't want him to start this Bible club because it's just going to lead to trouble, right. and then no one will donate money to the school that's tax. What? Yeah, public schools can't survive without uh, the the big atheist super PAC money. I guess, so that's the I issue guess. here. Right. Yeah, and her arguments like you have to understand people hate. Bible clubs in the United States. I mean, legally you have the right, but in America we hate Jesus. (laughs) 
That's her point. Yeah. And and Stephen responds with like, "Am I being detained?" And she's like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> no, bud. Just asking you not to start a Bible club." <laughs> Shit. So yeah, so she basically says, "You know, it'd be better if you didn't." He's like, "Fuck you." Um, and uh, then we cut to our first Bible club meeting. And I love this scene so much. If you interpret it as that these two dorky kids are just fucking with him and he never picks up on it, then I love this scene so much. But eventually the kids become Christian anyway, so I don't know exactly what they were shooting for. Yeah, it's hard to say if these kids are just like, have never heard of Jesus or they're doing what I did to people at Reason Rally. It's hard to tell. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Forcing him to say that Jesus is a zombie, which is where we ultimately go. So he starts off, he's like, we're going to start with a little biblical history. And I'm like, okay, those two words don't go together. Um, <laughs> and prepare for wrong information. In three, two, two. One. One. Paleolithic. When was the Paleolithic? <laughs> Millions of years ago. No, it fucking wasn't! <laughs> they might as well say it relates to the Triceratops era. Like, it's literally just an old word they could think of. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. And, okay, so now we get that moment that we were hinting at earlier where no one seems to know how English works anymore because they're trying to give these kids like some information about the bible this is an actual line in the movie okay and the bible is about god yeah that's the line yeah <laughs> and again it's unclear if they're messing with him because stephen baldwin doesn't like you if to play this movie like they were messing with stephen baldwin stephen baldwin should catch on and change their minds but instead stephen baldwin's just so fascinating he's like yeah yeah it is i got that one right it is about god and his daughter's like <laughs> <laughs> and jesus is his son uh-huh uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like his son. I'm nailing this. This is the best I've ever done on a test. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking crazy. And then, because the Bible's ridiculous, and these kids are either doing a great job of playing devil's advocate, or stupid questions reveal stupid answers, they're like, oh, so he came back to life like a zombie? And he's like, no, not a zombie. And they're like, but he came oh. back to life. Like a corpse, and, and it's and like started yeah. infecting people with his blood every <laughs> Sunday. It's, kind, it's a lot like a zombie lot thing. Like a zombie. Are you sure it's not a zombie? Psst. Are you sure it's not a zombie? <laughs> no, Stephen. They're making a really good argument. <laughs> but I also love this moment right before that, where like um, they're like, uh, "But Jesus was crucified. What? What does that mean? Uh, hung on a cross? Who would do that to him?" And I would just love to see the outtakes of how long it took Stephen Baldwin to not say Jew. <laughs> <laughs> the juice. <laughs> <laughs> and a dub in somebody else doing a Stephen Baldwin impression by the end of it. All, yeah, All of us. There we go. Good. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> also, this scene ends with them just talking about how great Bill Murray is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And they're like, they oh, start... I love zombie movies. 28 Days Later, oh, so good. Classic. You know what I'm talking about? First time fast zombies appear on film. No way, really? Yeah, first time fast zombies appear yeah. on film. Crazy. You oh. see Zombieland? Eh, Zombieland thought it was, was the that's best. like six minutes of this movie yeah. as these kids just talk. <laughs> well, Stephen Baldwin's like, my turn, my turn. And Baldwin gets mad here. He's like, I know what you guys are doing. Stop naming actors that are better than me. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> So, okay, then we cut to uh, Bible study is over, and now Dad's at home, and he's sad because the Bible club didn't go too well. Now, I, I just love the way this scene opens. All right, he's writing things on paper and then ripping them off and throwing away. What he writes on the paper is, and he's saying it out loud, of course, because he's a Christian in a Christian movie writing. He says, start with cool Bible stories. Wait, wait, that's Rip. stupid. That's stupid. I'm such a loser. I, say, I shouldn't say cool yeah. there. Yeah, but then he has to rip that paper up and throw it away because that he couldn't cross it out. He's throwing out entire pages with yeah, one sentence right. on them like four times in the scene. <laughs> and I, yeah, and so and while he's doing that, we're getting some extraordinarily porny shots of the daughter getting ready to go for a run in very clingy tight clothing. Really, really porny. So yeah, let's you know, regardless of the porniness of the shot, let's just all feel better about ourselves and say yes, it was an excessively porny shot yes. of the daughter. <laughs> and also this is where Baldwin he turns to the daughter, they're talking about how to make the Bible club better or whatever. And he goes, "Many of these kids have never even seen a Bible. Like really, they've never been to a hotel or yeah. 
Literally impossible. <laughs> impossible these children haven't seen a Bible. Fucking ridiculous. Again, what universe is this movie taking uh, place in? And this is where I run out because he's like, I've got to find another way to appeal to these kids. And I, I wrote in my notes, like, I so want him to wear a backwards cap and do a Jesus rap. What's more, I deserve that. Yeah. <laughs> also, but, Eli, Eli, you ready? Yeah. I'll beatbox. You want to rap it? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You're happy to make it. I'll, my name is Steven. I'm not Alex. Alex in movies. I'm not in movies. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Why? <laughs> my name is Jesus and I'm here to say the Jews killed me in a major style. Fuck. Right. That's all I got. Also, this is where the girl points out, uh, mom always said work harder. And I wrote in my notes. Yeah. Remind me to sew that onto a pillow. Yeah, right. Mom didn't have a lot of, a lot of wise shit to say, but she did use these two words in conjunction very often. Um, and then of course, this is where the daughter is going to go and run with Victor. So now we have to cut to, uh, to Garnier Fruit. He's also lacing up his shoes. And this is where he pulls out his pills. And I wrote immediately, Oh, he takes pills. Does he die or is God going to miracle cure him? It's 50 50 here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wrote, I bet he has cancer or steroids. He has. Cancer of the steroids. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he doesn't take his pill uh, in this scene, and that's going to be important. And instead, he goes running with daughter in the very porny slow motion of Febocam shots. <laughs> right. And But they don't, like, jog. They, like, do weird, like, running sprints, and then they, like, jump over a thing. It's like they're trying out for Leap 3. <laughs> <laughs> well, the impression I got is that these two a actors, like, were able to run, like, 11 feet, and they were trying to make that look like a montage. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's it's a track around a pond. Mm -hmm. So, I, I'm wondering, why were they running it back and forth all on one side, all on like, the same wind side. sprints? Yeah. <laughs> like, a coach was, been, like, whistling at them and going back and forth. Also, by the way, the music note I had here was a uh, rejected theme song from Girl Meets World. Okay. Which was fun. <laughs> no, no, which was I fun. like it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and, and so they run for a little while, and then they have their little conversation where basically she says, but we can't date. You're not Jesus-y enough for me. Right. And he asks, why is that a big deal? And her answer is, literally, God's a pretty big deal. <laughs> yep. That's all she <laughs> gives him. So, and I just wrote in my notes, run, Vic, you're never going to get any pussy. Run, run, boy, with hair like that, you could get some. <laughs> Find a girl who smokes, Vic. Find a girl who smokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Preferably a chick who's at least tried to give herself a prison tattoo. You're in. You're in. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, he just volunteers for the friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, at this point, um, Lorenzo Lamas shows up to angrily pick up herbal essences from the park where he finds and he, he's dressed like a serbian bodyguard here he could not be more e they're trying so hard to make him the evil atheist man yeah. yeah he's gonna give you a great deal on shag carpet <laughs> <laughs> well and okay so this is also where this movie takes a dark turn up until now it's just been oh this is silly that's not how this really works oh that's silly that's not when the paleolithic started but at this point the movie stops being fun silly and starts getting dangerous and stupid this is 37 minutes and 15 seconds where we learn that the reason that victor has pills is because he has major depression but he doesn't want to take those pills because they make things worse for him Yep, and this is where I started writing fuck this movie in my notes, but it is not the last time I will write mm -hmm. fuck this movie yeah. in my notes. Yeah, and we should point out he threw out the rest of his Prozac in the garbage earlier. That's going to yeah. come back around. Right, right, yeah, exactly. And he hasn't even learned to pray yet. That's really fucking dangerous. <laughs> right. Yeah. Also, we learned that he has depression, and depression is portrayed in this movie the way that someone who all the people they know who have depression killed themselves with depraved depression, which is just like, my brain doesn't work sometimes okay sometimes i just want to shoot and then basketball sad <laughs> and and also look because this has come up several times in several of the fucking movies but anybody else curious why religion is so hell-bent on not curing mentally ill people oh oh i know i know <laughs> choose me choose me. Oh, never picks me never picks me <laughs> stupid non-interactive podcast <laughs> And, and then, so, and this is also, again, because this goddamn script is just following the last fucking scene, we got Victor fighting with his dad on the way home about whether or not he should take his medicine. And the dad could not be more reasonable. Like, no. he's not nice about it, but he's like, hey man, you gotta take your fucking pills. You skipped your doctor's appointment. You gotta take your 
fucking pills. And he's like, why? Because you'll lock me up in a mental hospital again? And it's like, yes, I will send you somewhere where they can take care of you to make sure you're safe because I love you. And he's like, gah. <laughs> well, right. But, but not just because a kid really would be like, right? A 15-year-old kid would be like that. So I can understand this if this was a movie about Lorenzo Lamas trying to deal with his fucking son. And the son would actually be like, oh, I don't want to take my pills away. But the movie agrees with him, right? The movie is presenting it like, yeah, he locked him in a mental asylum like an atheist would. Just like when you sent me to the hospital and they ripped out my my appendix. You needed <laughs> your appendix removed. You had appendicitis. They <laughs> tore out my organs. No, it's not <laughs> how that went. You went to the doctor because you needed a doctor. Go to the doctor when you need a doctor. It's just a different part of your body. <laughs> It's not even that far away from the parts you'd be fine treating. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and by the way, this whole conversation, at first they're driving home, but this whole conversation we just talked about happens out of the car because they pull over for some reason to talk. And then they get back in the car. I'm thinking, why didn't, why, why didn't they just do that in the car? Why did they ever get out? <laughs> and then I'm thinking, why did they get back in? Like, we don't need to know how they get to the next scene. <laughs> we'll fucking piece it together if they're somewhere else. They... Probably drove there. They were afraid the Christian Post would really pan this. This reviewer enjoyed the movie until characters magically transported from one place to another. <laughs> also, they just leave a car abandoned in the middle of the road. <laughs> Every so often, things would go dark. Wait, that was me blinking. Sorry. <laughs> And I have to say, from from a purely filmmaking perspective, I think that may have bothered me more than anything else. The fact that this sing, scene continued on until they got back in the car. Because, like, it, it could have just, like, ended on the upset teen. It could have ended on the frustrated dad. But, no, it lets him get back in the car and drive <laughs> off because the goddamn filmmaker thought, people are going to wonder what happened after that. I mean, did they just live on that street corner forever? I mean, it'll make no sense otherwise. Yeah, so now it's time for Bible Club meeting number two, where we learn that these two dorks are committed to fucking with Bible, man. <laughs> and he brought shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they made, they made shirts. Um, and, uh, he starts off the meeting. He says, do your parents know you're here? And I think that's time to leave when an adult asks you. That's how Jerry Sandusky started meetings. Like, <laughs> do you know your parents are here? Okay, it's true. No one's ever been glad about the thing the adult has done after they ask if the coast is clear. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where we introduce also possibly my favorite prop in the history of film. So he gives everybody the T-shirts and then he's like, but I've got something else for you. And he pulls out, I shit you not. The Action Bible. The Action Bible! That's what it says on the cover, and it's got comic book art of Jesus. It says The Action <laughs> Bible, and one kid goes, it's a comic book, and the dorky kid goes, it's a graphic novel, you idiot. And I was like, yeah, it is. It is. A, <laughs> it's not a comic book, but yeah. I wonder one would be like, uh, oh, you mean like uh, Gaiman? And then Baldwin's was like, no, 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 you, you get stoned to death for that. That's not. <laughs> so, what, what did you say? Sandman? Only one American God. Only one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, and also I love this, like, one of the just little throwaway line. Um, he's handing out his action Bibles, and one girl goes, I've never had my own Bible before. <laughs> yeah, and I wrote in my notes, you still don't. That's a comic book. <laughs> it's a graphic novel. <laughs> So also, okay, so now they're going to do, and this is so insane to me, so after he passes him out, he's like, let's do a reading from our action Bible. So I'm like, it's a comic book, or graphic <laughs> novel. I'm like, what, what is she going to do? Like, okay, and then Jesus in the first square, he's like, kapang, and his, but his thought bubble was like, uh-oh. <laughs> It's exact. I wrote exact. Rebecca, would you read for us? Hey, dudes, it's me, Jesus, tubular. <laughs> Also, I want to point out that he attributes the book of Matthew as to to Matthew as as having written it, which is like thinking that Watson wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories. But okay, fine, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Also, this is where we learn the lesson that he pulls out in their movie is the <laughs> it's better for a child to drown than it is for him to be sinful. Yeah. And we're supposed to be like, huh? Good lesson to teach these kids on the second day. Good <laughs> lesson. <laughs> Well, and is it just me or does they, because they can kind of present it as if you leave Bible club, we're going to throw a millstone around your neck, drop you into the sea. I mean, there's sort of at least that, 
that 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 suggestion in there, right? Right. And Goofus and Gallant like have a little like moment about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I was like, oh, your dad's neck's gonna hurt. Punch, 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 punch. They spend like six <laughs> minutes on this. <laughs> Fucking stop. Somebody cut. God damn it. Shit. So now we get, uh, so, so yeah, so Bible Club goes much better this time around or whatever, I guess. That's what we're getting there. And then we cut to Stephen Baldwin helping Corbin Burnson with his car. And this is where evil atheist dad number two shows up. To rip a god-sized hole into Stephen Baldwin's heart. Yeah, it's a drive-by atheist thing. <laughs> That's what we. Uh, he might as well have just sprayed the side of the car with an Uzi. That's how unrealistic <laughs> this fucking scene is. Just throwing copies of Dawkins and Hitchens at him. Yeah, and he he comes up and he's like, "Did you tell my boy he's going to hell?" And Baldwin, I just want to be like, "Oh, which one's your son? The faggot? Cut! No, <laughs> no." <laughs> Oh, sorry, Steve. sorry, sorry. Is it, which one's your son? The gay? Cut. Still? No. Steve, that's two dollars in the jar now, huh? Huh? You want enough for ice cream on the way home? Yeah. I do want enough for ice cream on the way home. Oh, shit. So, oh. yeah, no, he's furious. I look like the world's first unsuccessful faith transplant. <laughs> So yeah, so now he wants uh the the, the evil, evil atheist dad number two wants this action Bible the hell away from his son, and 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 I, and I wrote in my notes at this point like the atheists in this movie are always inches away from punching someone. Little did I know, <laughs> yeah, he literally goes say Bible again. Like he has that moment like <laughs> you say the fucking Bible again, man. <laughs> say say one, one more goddamn time. They yeah. speak English in Bible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's going to bounce the action Bible off of Stephen Baldwin's face like the great Santini. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but then, okay, so like clearly this guy's trying to taunt him or whatever, and he's all angry or whatever. And as Stephen Baldwin starts to walk away, he goes, where was your God when your wife died? And I'm thinking, well, okay, in a vacuum, that is a great taunt. That, that's an excellent. Sure. I say that to religious people with dead wives all the time, and I, it <laughs> almost always wins the argument. It's a very effective one. <laughs> This, this part is accurate. Sam never used that in Intelligence Squared, and I always thought it was a big weakness of his. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then Stephen Baldwin <laughs> rightly kicks his ass, right? When someone says that about your wife, you get to beat them up. That's how the universe works. But then everyone, the rest of the movie, pretends like, oh, he lost his cool. And all he ever has to do is be like, oh, um, he made fun of my dead wife. And then everyone will be like, oh, yeah, get him. You want me to hold him? I'll get his arms. But, but, his right. arms. <laughs> but let's be realistic, though. Okay, look. If you are a fucking school teacher who cannot hold your shit together when someone wants to come, because look, school kids want to taunt and tease you and fuck with you, and they will say any goddamn thing they can to get under your skin. If you are a grown adult and you can't let a fucking word from a, another human being slide off of you, you do not belong teaching a goddamn high school. Right, like, like, yes, in in a vacuum, in the in the just out in the world, somebody makes fun of your dead wife. Yeah, sure, you get to kick their ass. If you're a fucking school teacher and you can't hold your temper in long enough to just go in and the, to go to that guy and say, "Dude, are you fucking are you serious about what you're saying to me right now?" and then like solve that like a grown up, you should not have this job. <laughs> now I'll never get accepted to Camp Quest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what's holding you back. <laughs> Also, small thing here, um, we see that Baldwin still has a back of the neck tattoo. And I'm thinking loving the bad man too. Oh, is that what's oh. happening here? Is he just getting ready? <laughs> that is all I want for Daniel Christmas. Day Lewising that shit. There was, <laughs> there was uh, at least a couple of tattoos that probably should be, should have been covered up in makeup, especially the Jesus ones on the atheists. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get there. But I guess now that we've added solving your problems with violence to the Jesus can cure your neurochemical imbalance undercurrent, I think we need to pause so that Eli can find an inhaler. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will I be able to connect that sprinkle ball with a stripey candy? What the fuck is a puffler? Is this stupid fucking movie still on? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the lethargic conclusion of God's Club. And action. But I don't understand. Who killed Jesus? The Jews. Cut. Cut. Okay, Steve, we we talked about this. The line is, we all did. Oh, okay. We all did. Got it. Okay, sorry. Do, do you want... 
Do you want a towel or something before nope. we? No, nope, that's on. my skin. Oh. oh, okay, okay. And one more time. I'm your Venus. Action. But I don't understand. Who killed Jesus? The Jews did. Sorry, so that's me. That's, all right, no, but still rolling, still rolling. Just keep get it. But I don't understand. Jews, the Hebrews, Jewy Jew Jews, and take ninety five action. But I don't understand. Who killed Jesus? We all did, especially the Jews. Ah, oh, that's perfect. That is good. We can fix that in post. Good show, everybody. Take a bow. Oh, not really. And we're back for more Breakdown. When we last left our hero, he was sucker punching the local used Rolex salesman, and now it's time for his daughter to take revenge. Yeah. These atheist hoodlums are going to vandalize the classroom, guys. Yeah, yeah. So now this is going to be, this is the two bully girls that have been following around Piggy, 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 and Garnier Fructis, who is one of their ex-boyfriends. Why he's hanging out with his ex, who the fuck knows. Um, but the one of the daughters is the daughter of the guy that Stephen Baldwin beat up for talking shit about his wife. So th- now they're going to take revenge on his Jesus Club for yeah, that. On his classroom <laughs> slash Jesus Club. And yeah. uh, Christian Movie Bingo not being able to swear, the graffiti that they <laughs> spray in his classroom <laughs> is literally, yep. quote, Worst teacher. <laughs> it's over the <laughs> yeah. line, guys. Just, Tone it down. Kids could watch this movie. God! Two weeks in a row, we got Canadian spray paint vandals. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, this teacher is a B minus. He's okay. He's okay. And right. uh, they also, toilet paper, the classroom, it's mm-hmm. indoors. That's nothing. Well, the yeah, whole right. point of toilet paper is when it gets a little bit wet, and then it's a pain in the ass to clean up. That's... Now it's just cleaning supplies for the rest of the room that they vandalized. <laughs> Although I will say they were quite symmetrical with their toilet papering. It was super classy. It's a classroom. Hate to break it to these kids. Teachers don't clean their own classrooms. Well, right. <laughs> this is just some janitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, oh, I, I love it. Okay, so we, we get this like this this cut like where it starts off showing them putting the toilet paper in and then it immediately cuts to Stephen Baldwin and the black principal lady um, standing there looking at it. Baldwin goes... I've never seen anything like this. This character watched his wife die in a fiery car wreck. In this movie. In this we movie. We watched him watch something like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's looking at a vandalized... And not even like a, a particularly... Va- there's, there's spray paint. They ripped up his God's Club signs. And there's toilet paper around. That's it. Yeah, it would take all of eight minutes to clean this room. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, the spray paint a little longer. But that's about it. Um, and then, and now he needs to go to the office. The, the, the principal lady is like, oh, and by the way, also, we have some silly rule about assaulting the student's parents. You, you need to go to the office if you still have a job here. This might be the least of your concerns. So he goes to the office. Everybody's yelling and screaming by the time Stevie shows up. And, and I, right. he, as soon as he walks in, Lorenzo Lamas turns into him and he goes, your Bible club is done. And so are you. And I'm like, that you have the order in that wrong, you know, like the Bible, like if he's getting fired, obviously the Bible club is also not, he's not going to be doing that as a free citizen. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to kill you up and shut you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and basically he walks into the room and they're doing the I'm yelling scene from Anchorman. Just for, I know loud noises. <laughs> and also... At no point in this scene does anyone go, oh, he mocked his dead wife, which would have made everyone go like, yeah, okay, I kind of get that. Like, still bad, but I get that. Instead, he's like, he was provoked. Like, he walked up to him and shoved his shoulder. Like, this is a very difference between, like, he was provoked and he mocked his dead wife. They are Those are very different concepts when explaining behavior. <laughs> right. I, I want to say, though, I think probably from a legal perspective, if he pushed him, he'd probably have been better off than with the mocking of the dead wife thing. But yeah, yeah. But just as far as like four people in a room trying to understand what happened. Yeah, that the, the, is probably information everyone should have had. Because they couldn't have written he mocked his dead wife into the script and then had the other characters be like, still no hitting. <laughs> <laughs> And also, they're talking about the Bible Club. That's all they're talking about. They're like, well, the Bible Club is legal. I'm like, he punched a dude. Why are we not focused on that? <laughs> they keep getting distracted. Also, he keeps parking in the in my parking space. It's 34, <laughs> not 43, Brian. All right? <laughs> and, of course, at the same time, it is now time for the daughter to fight the bully. 
And these are my notes in succession on this fight scene. This fight is almost impossible to jerk off to. Okay, mildly difficult. Okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking paid Brazzers $5 for a video just like this. Now it's on Netflix. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Idiot. Brazzers won't take Heath's calls anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to Asa. I want to talk to Asa. <laughs> She also has this great moment where the bully's on top of her and it's like slow motion. And I wrote, get up, you son of a bitch, because Jesus loves you. <laughs> Two of those in a row, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, they're having fully dressed lesbian sex. And I'm fine with that. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm kind of pissed that the dorky kid ran to get dad to end that scene on us a little early. This is also where one of the kid goes, world star, I'm going to put this on world star. And I wrote in my notes, nobody who made this movie knows what world star is. No one's ever been there. I'm sure. I think they think it's one of the Mormon planets you get when you die. They do not know about the website world star. It's a hopscotch page. <laughs> So now, I guess him and his daughter are in trouble for violently lashing out. So they both have to go to the principal's office. And also, okay, so it, th this should be its own Christian movie, Bingo Square. The movie starts lying to us about itself, right? Because the, the girl's going like, I was just defending myself. Like, I saw the scene. You pushed first. Yeah. There was no punching, but she threw first push. Indeed. I was just, he, she attacked me from behind. You showed us the scene. That's not what happened. She had a knife. Okay, movie. Okay. <laughs> This is why you can't shoot out of order with Christian movies. They forget. <laughs> Just some poor editor sitting there going, it's fine. It's fine. You still get paid. You still get paid. <laughs> and, and apparently there's a zero tolerance policy for violence here. That's what we're told. Yeah. But except when Baldwin assaulted that parent before and he still works. So like what, there's a one tolerance policy, but now it's down to zero. Yeah. It was, we started. <laughs> But now there's no more. Sorry, your dad just took the one. He yeah. took the one tolerance. <laughs> also, I love to. Okay, so after this, we get this great scene where the um, where the where the bully girls are plotting against them, like how they're going to get their revenge. Right. And I want to point out because I wrote in my notes as a joke, the bullies are going to burn down the school. Right? Ha ha! <laughs> Funny joke. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> that was my joke. You'll. <laughs> We'll we'll throw a punchline on that here in about three scenes, but yeah. yes, yeah, right. The most ridiculous thing you could have thought they were plotting wasn't as bad as what... Okay, so yeah. So now we're back in the kitchen for more dad and daughter talk. Right, and her head hurts, so here, have some aspirin, because they're not against all medicine, just the life-saving ones, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> have as much aspirin as you like, just don't take the pills that'll stop you from dying. Yeah, right. <laughs> and this is where she goes, Mom always used to go to the Bible, and I wanted her so badly, she brings over the Bible, and they do the, like, random flip, find exactly the right phrase thing from Christian it, movies, Right. but uh... I wanted her to open it, and for it to be cut out, and there was just a giant black dildo in there. <laughs> <laughs> they both just stare at it for a minute while Steven's like, oh, that's why I thought she buzzed when she read. That makes sense now. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and uh, she flips open to Romans, according to she starts reading something from Romans. But that's not where Romans is. It's very clearly not where she flipped. Why can't they ever get the page right in these movies? You How hard is that? think. Well, and I would have loved, to, I'd, like, I'd like to see somebody try this in real life. You know, they watch this movie and they're like, oh, okay, that's how you do it. You know, so they just, all right, well, let's get some random advice. Uh, grasshoppers have four legs. Shit, wrong part. Hold on. Uh, and the Lord said, rape the fuck out of the, no, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, and then Kush begat Nimrod. You, you want to stop there. It's, it's not going to get any better. That's yeah, when you Kush think about it, begatting Nimrod means that's... that you should do your homework. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out here. What was the rape part? Go back one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's applicable. No? Stephen right. Cut. Stephen Cut. <laughs> <laughs> But no, she happens to find one of the seven appropriate verses in this moment or whatever. And just then, the black lady who is the principal or vice principal or whatever the hell shows up um, to, to give him a pep talk and to let right. him know that he's going to get a chance to say his piece at the board meeting on Thursday. Yeah, they're going to let you defend yourself because apparently they decide disciplinary action for violent teachers at board meetings. Public board meetings <laughs> yeah all right so now it's time to shit on mental health professionals a little bit more no movie no 
<sighs> oh, God, this scene was so hard to watch because it seemed like they kept accidentally trying to make the psychologist a good guy. And they're like, well, no, 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 wait, wait, fuck. Fuck, right. no. Obviously, they had Stephen Baldwin describe one of his many therapy sessions sarcastically, <laughs> and the scriptwriters were like, yeah, what an asshole. He asked you to talk about your feelings, right? So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. My wife says if we go to a therapist, I'll come out out of the closet again, so we can't go back anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nailed him. So, yeah, so now we're getting Victor Garnier Fructis. He's hanging out with, uh, he's at his, uh, psychologist's office or whatever, um, talking about this girl that he met that he, that he loves. And this is where, for the first time, it comes out that the pills that he's taking are Prozac. Right. Okay. I know, I, I don't know how familiar the average audience member is with antidepressants, but he's probably got some damn serious depression if they have him on Prozac. Yeah, Prozac is a very, very intense medication for very, very severe depression as a general rule. It's also the only one that most people have heard of. Yeah, well, so right, I'm sure they right. were just like, Prozac! Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They probably had no fucking idea right. what's prescribed for what. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lucky that it wasn't like melatonin, you know? Right, yeah, lithium. <laughs> Arbituates, <laughs> like just whatever fucking pills they could have thought of that day. But right, the message right. of this fucking scene, because he's being such a little bitch to his therapist, but the message of this scene is, listen up, teens, if you hate your therapist, it's because you're way smarter than them. Like, well, whoa, what? got him. Because the therapist is like, tell me about your feelings, and he's like, why don't you tell me about your feelings? And the movie's like, man, this kid's so much smarter than this mental health professor. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't keep up. <laughs> well, and they, of course, they so they start talk, off talking about the girl, but then they end up talking about you know the fact that she's religious, and the shrink actually warns him that he's not going to get any pussy. Yep. The, yep. the shrink is actually like, "You sure you want to have sex? You want to date a Christian girl? She'll never let you have sex with her." Big fan of uh, over the pants hand jobs in five years. That's perfect for you. <laughs> But for, first of all, this is so stupid because every girl I fucked in high school was a Christian. I say that like that's a lot of girls. Both of the girls I fucked in high school were Christians. <laughs> but you know, anyway, yeah, anyway, like seems like an odd thing for the shrink to bring up one way or the other. But I guess psychologists make great wingmen. He starts to give him tips. He's like, you know, I have a client who's got uh, her. She's going through a bunch of issues with her dad right now. And I'm just saying, you can pick a hole. <laughs> you can pick a hole, my friend. I'm going to drop her number. I'm going to leave the room. I'm going to leave my book open with her appointment book. Maybe give her a call. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Believe me, I would, but I'm not allowed to. I can leave, but you're, you're fine. You're a good looking kid. Just, you know, maybe if you do videotape it, yeah, you show it to me. That's, I'm just, if you do. Yeah. Free thought radio. <laughs> There's also this great moment where he's like, so do you believe in God? And the therapist, like a good therapist, is like, why don't we talk about you? And he's like, you're trying to deflect the question. And he's like, no, I'm a grown up doing therapy. And he's like, tell me which God you believe in. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this movie is like, you see, that son of a bitch won't answer. Right. Also, he has this great moment where he's like, I don't believe in God. And we're supposed to be like, oh my gosh, he's so depressed. He doesn't believe in God. And he goes, I just can't talk to something I can't see. And I wrote in my notes, yeah, atheists are really mostly hung up on the fact that we can't see God. I lose it whenever I blink. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought the whole universe disappeared. It's really, I'm a visually based creature. I have no object permanence. <laughs> well, and, and I guess by the time this is over, the therapist tells him he should read the Bible. Yeah. Right? Look, if it makes you feel better, read it and go off your pills and cut yourself. Does that feel better, too? <laughs> <laughs> um, also, there's a bad Babe Ruth joke. Uh, at least the movie admits that its that its humor is terrible. Yeah, that's how the kid actually leaves the scene. He's like, yeah, that joke was awful. I'm leaving. You're the worst. Yeah. Terrible Babe Ruth joke. <laughs> this movie's badly written. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So now... The bully girl is going to take her revenge. <laughs> IRA style. Yeah, right. Egypt <laughs> Spring style. <laughs> because she had, we cut to a scene where she is about to throw a Molotov cocktail at their home. 
while they're asleep yeah. in it. While they're not asleep even, in it. Yeah, not even while they're at the game. Yeah, this is a good classic atheist maneuver. Do not steal our parking spots. That's the message <laughs> everyone needs to learn here. So, yeah, the kids today with their double homicide attempts and their dubstep music, she fucking lights a goddamn Molotov cocktail and throws it into their home. <laughs> So, you know, of course, we get uh, Baldwin waking up and there's smoke and he's got to go get the daughter or whatever. Um, and I only I, I, I have to bring that up because then he comes out with this gigantic fire extinguisher to put out what's basically a birthday candle gone wrong off to the side of this house where they're filming this. Yeah, they borrowed some of the after effects from uh, Vultures of Horror. <laughs> yeah, here right. The, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for the small garden fire. And he approaches the fire like it's a bear. He's he's like, get behind me, get behind me. No sudden movements. Don't frighten the fire. Show it your Don't palms. Look it in the eye. Show it your palms. <laughs> Don't get between it and its fire, baby. <laughs> and uh, then we get the firefighter explaining what happened. He goes, "We found this uh, Molotov cocktail, so probably arson." You think? And he's like, "Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, that that wasn't our Molotov cocktail that we had in the house that fell." <laughs> So, you yeah, can't keep these arson. by the curtains. That's important. You gotta. <laughs> well, I love to because like the car is also spray painted on, which means that like he was like it was probably arson because they also vandalized your car. But that means that the, the the bully daughter went like, you know what? Let's murder him and his daughter and spray paint moderately unkind words on his car. Like let's really rub this in. <laughs> Also, again, with worst teacher ever. So yeah. we're trying to connect the crimes there. These are serial <laughs> arsonists here. <laughs> That's important. Never cut in front of atheists in the lunch line. They'll rape your whole family. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, everyone here is reacting to this attempted murder slightly less than they react to Stephen Baldwin punching a man who insulted him <laughs> in the stomach. Everyone's like, oh. I heard you had some trouble at your house. No one's like, oh my God, someone tried to murder you over this. Someone tried to murder you. Let's get the cops involved. Everyone's just like, yeah. yeah at least they didn't throw toilet paper in your classroom. Yeah, exactly. Right. You've got people riled up. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. So, they're basically equal parts pissed about the attempted murder and the vandalized classroom thing. Um, and this is really driven home in the next scene where where uh, Victor catches up with the daughter while she's on her way home. And she's like, you tried to murder me with a Molotov cocktail. I don't want to talk to you anymore. And he's like, I was not involved in that. That's kind of a big assumption to, to Also, make. you are not reacting like someone who I attempted to murder. Because <laughs> she's like, did you mess up my dad's classroom? Did you try to kill us? And he's like, one of those. <laughs> one of those. You're reacting appropriately to one of those. <laughs> um, and then we finally get the daughter swimming. Now, we saw the pool early. They've been setting this up and everything. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, God, this girl is wet in so many of these scenes. Someone bring Heath a Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> he's not gonna be okay <laughs> well actually he is because apparently in this movie she's swimming in like shorts and a long sleeve shirt or something and a hazmat yeah. suit what the yeah fuck? she's swimming in a burkini where's the french police right? when you need them <laughs> <laughs> but before she got out i was excited though definitely yeah like, yeah little underage was... wild things that was about to happen but yeah. <laughs> it was a little just, instead of hot lesbians it's incest with Stephen Baldwin. Not quite as good. I'll give it back in two weeks, by the way. That's what we This is why we Andrew. needed to put it in the LLC. Andrew! We <laughs> nope. <laughs> and then he gets her out of the pool and they're like, they decide that like, you know what? This wasn't worth it. And he says, literally, I wouldn't sacrifice your life for any amount of Bible studies. And yeah, I'm like, good. What? good. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that the chess club does not outrank your daughter's life. Yeah, <laughs> what a weird thing to point out. <laughs> I would never sell you into slavery for an uncrustable. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> it's, now that you say that, though, it makes me feel like that was a thing you thought about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just letting you know. Just letting you know. One uncrustable, by the way. That's how many I would not sell you into slavery for. They come in packs of 12... <laughs> They're coming so, back to town. And of course, now we have to cut to uh to Victor's dad catching him not doing drugs. 
Literally, it is the I found drugs in your room scene. And you haven't taken them. Yeah. And you haven't taken them. Yeah. That's <laughs> how I imagine Noah confronts Heath every morning. He's like, seriously? <laughs> seriously? I learned it by watching you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't take Prozac every day. So, yeah. and But again, like this movie is presenting refusing to take your life-saving medication as an act of righteous rebellion. Mm -hmm. And this is where I discovered upping the font size in this movie in our notes where I wrote, fuck this movie. It's when the, when he says, I'm trying something else, goes over and takes out the Bible. That is when I chose 72 font to write, fuck this movie forever because fuck this movie forever. You need your fucking medication you need to take your medication all the time even when it feels like it's not working you have to talk to your doctor you always 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 have to take your medication all the time every day medication regardless of how many action bibles you do or do not have now i actually want to just read this direct i'm reading directly from eli's um notes right here it's all, all caps. Prayer don't work. To, to, how do I change the font? How how do fuck this movie forever? Take your fucking medication. Of course, the fuck this movie forever in the aforementioned seventy. Yeah, you get to live my emotional experience. Take your fucking medication. Oh, take your medication. <laughs> Well, and again, like Lorenzo Lamas is supposed to be the bad guy, but a, a, a evil atheist dad number one is supposed to be the bad guy here. And his son says, "Well, Rebecca says that the Bible will help me," and Dad says, "Well, Rebecca's a moron." And I'm like, "Yes, Dad yep. is as right as right can fucking be. Rebecca is a goddamn moron. She's a fucking in the movie anyway, fifteen year old kid. In reality, she's eighteen, which makes me feel a lot better about myself this morning. A girl telling <laughs> you that she knows better than your psych." Psychologist, what you need medically and her fucking prescription is magic spells. Yes. Like, how could this movie possibly not recognize that it is evil? And the dad, the only argument against the movie and against the dad in this movie is that he doesn't ask his suicidal son to take his medication nice enough. Right. Like he just keeps coming back to him and being like, oh, pretty please with sugar on top. And he's like, my girlfriend says that I can squeeze my butt cheeks together and I won't have a chemical imbalance in my brain anymore. And he's like, well, your girlfriend hasn't developed all the wrinkles in her brain yet. And he's like, you're so mean. Therefore, you are wrong. Why? No one who has a beard that's white on top and brown on the bottom can tell me how to live my life. Get out of here, Tim Allen, slowly turning into Santa. <laughs> Go referee the Hunger Games. <laughs> like you were meant to. So now uh, Corbin Burnson shows up for a little more porch time with Stevie uh, because this movie apparently thinks that the plot of it is this God's Club thing and not the Prozac thing going on on the side. And the so, murder. Yeah. It, well, right. Right. The attempted murder or whatever. Yeah. It's still somehow about this goddamn Jesus club. And we we cut to this scene. Okay, so this is where Corbin Burns is going to show up to give him a pep talk about his big speech on Thursday or whatever. But when we cut to this scene, Stephen Baldwin is taking notes for his speech out of the action Bible, out, out of, of the, the comic Bible. Bible. <laughs> I think at first they had real Bibles, but Stevie wanted picture books. He had to put that in his contract or whatever. I will not have to deal with books that don't have pictures. <laughs> his script had pictures in it, too, of just like him looking really ripped, doing a bunch of push-ups. And he was like, yeah, and then what line do I say? God, like a third of this movie's budget was designing the graphic novel for Stephen Baldwin's script. <laughs> Just says babe between every panel, yeah. <laughs> so, and of course, the 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 pep talk here from Corbin Burnson is about how this is just like David and Goliath, and it doesn't point out that except that he's like Goliath, and uh, he's gonna win. So, what what Corbin Burnson is saying here is that Goliath is the super powerful atheist political machine in small town Vermont. Yeah. That's Finally, who's... someone calls out the super powerful atheist political machine in small town Vermont. <laughs> so, yeah. So after we get done raping, murdering, and then re-raping the David and Goliath metaphor, uh, we get to move on 
uh, to where, like, I guess the daughter has now found out who tried to murder them, and the first... I, like this just like circulates the rumor mill. It's not like oh so and so got arrested today for trying to murder us. It's just like you know what I heard from so and so on the such and such. So right. yeah, they now know it was the two bully girls that tried to murder him. I think that's fairly obvious since they spray painted "worst teacher" in the same handwriting as they did when they vandalized the. But yeah. at any rate, yeah. And but well, they, it was Tresme who turned in the arsonists because oh, yes. was it? That was the Christian thing to do um, because the atheists we harbor. Arse, the reason rally it was just all fugitive arsonists That's <laughs> really so now we go back to victor with his shrink as though this movie is trying to remind us how bad it is right so like now this kid who has through this movie refused to take his antidepressants right like the f- very early on we saw him not take his antidepressants he hasn't done it since he is now very clearly feeling suicidal or at least as close as this script will get to you know what suicidal would be like because right, um, he also lives in a haunted house of suicide implements. He's like, so, do you have any guns in the house? He's like, yeah, my dad's got a few. Any nooses? Yeah, there are decorations. How about the bathtubs? Yeah, that's where we make our toast. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I, I had such a hard time figuring out where they were going with the psychologist character, specifically because of this scene. Because in this scene, the psychologist starts telling him how awesome reading the Bible is and how that will help him. Well, they're very careful. He's like, it's a proven fact that some people like the Bible. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It's a response to like, can the Bible cure depression? And he's like, the Bible has pages. <laughs> <laughs> that is certain. Scientifically proven fact. Yeah. Um, so, but Victor storms off. Uh, so the psychologist calls his dad who ha- picks up half a ring into the phone call. It, it, it's all of Christian movie them right there. Um, but instead of following this important thread, we're going to now go to the big school board meeting where the fate of the Bible club will finally be decided. Right. And the atheist parents have all showed up and they're confused that they don't get a vote about whether or not a teacher should be fired. Yeah. What? <laughs> right. Do they think that that's how this kind of stuff just happens? I have no idea what the people who wrote this movie think a school system works like. They think there's nine principals, two (laughs) teachers, one of whom is now dead. The high school (laughs) students are just constantly trying to murder each other. And the school board is like half PTA, half military tribunal. Also, tiny moment right here in the movie, but it is magical. At one hour, 11 minutes, and 54 seconds in, there's a shot, and Stephen Baldwin has the entire front row to himself, except he is sitting right next to a random Asian woman who's an extra, who spends the entire scene and this movie looking anywhere but where all the other characters are looking. (laughs) Go back and watch it. I don't know what was going on. She doesn't have any lines, but this one woman just is always always facing like at a right angle to everyone else <laughs> and Stephen Baldwin is sitting right next to her for no reason it's amazing you have to watch it's so crazy awkward awesome awesome yeah. that's o- 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 <laughs> only one of the many reasons I will be rewatching this film and so now Stephen takes the floor because he just wants everyone to be free like America yes And this is where we learn that separation of church and state was never intended to be a separation from God. And I wrote my notes, that is the very nature of separation of church and state. That's exactly what it is. Right there in the words. And I wrote my notes, I'm glad Andrew isn't watching this movie. It would kill him. (laughs) Hey, Andrew, did you watch this movie? Nope. (laughs) <laughs> um, and then he plays the dead wife card right away, you know, mm. which just it seemed a little, a little, you know, grabby. Little gauche. Little gauche. A <laughs> little bit. A little bit. I wanted him to call for a moment of silence. As you know, my wife died. Ten minutes of silence, please. <laughs> okay, we got to start over again. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a black girl in here? That's probably the problem. <laughs> Also, this is where the John Leguizima character decides, he goes, thanks to your club, my daughter tried to murder you. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, 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 that's why she tried to burn down your house and kill you and your daughter. <laughs> and he's like, don't worry, I'm not going to press any charges. And he's like, wow, 
She tried to murder you. That seems like you should. <laughs> Is that how that works, by the way? That if somebody tries to murder you, you can just say, no, 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 that was okay. I probably deserved it. I, yeah, it's like a bar fight. No matter what level of the crime, you're just allowed to be like, no, 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 backseas, backseas, it's all fine. Oh, okay, good, good. That's that's good to know. All crimes are like spousal abuse. That's what I'm saying. All crimes. <laughs> And also, I, I, I like during his little speech or whatever, he has to like misappropriate a few other statistics where he's like, uh, you know, but it's it's been proven that people who, and kids who love Jesus are happier and they make better choices. And I'm like, wait a minute, atheists are less likely to to get pregnant as teens, to get divorced. This is your these are your fucking rules to go to uh, get an abortion, to go to jail, to commit a violent crime, to vote for Trump, etc. What better fucking choices are you talking about? Right. I think that he, what he's doing is the like people in communities are mm-hmm. happier by that one study that we did and then didn't want to show anybody the numbers than the people <laughs> who aren't in communities. And we didn't really explain how we defined people who weren't in communities. Well, right. Okay. So for anybody who's not familiar with this, because this comes up quite a bit and I want to just arm all the atheists listening for this one if, if they encounter it. Okay. So studies have shown that people who are regular church attendees are healthier and live longer, right? Now, part of this is because if you're not super healthy, it's hard for you to regularly attend church. But the important thing is, is that all of these advantages disappear when you go to like people who are super religious, but don't attend a church. And they also disappear if you compare them to atheists who have a weekly type of community group that they go to, like people who go to like CFI meetings or Sunday assembly or something like that, that would all disappear, right? So yes, there's an, there, there is a, a huge advantage health wise to being part of a group of people that will help take care of you as you get older that's it it's also cross-denominational like it also works for like buddhist monks who go to Mm -hmm. buddha camp so it's not like god's looking out for everybody who shows up in a certain place in a circle (laughs) god doesn't love gatherings (laughs) right exactly but of course the christians love to throw this out as no no people who go to church are healthier and Stephen Baldwin's face disproves that entire argument. So I don't even know why we, we don't even have to tell you about the studies. You just look at Stephen Baldwin's skin, which is made of 90% flesh colored Play Doh, and you know that that's bullshit. If God would let that happen to him, what's, what, you, what, 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 what is your hope? You don't make bad movies for God. Yeah. Yeah. We get Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. Who do you got? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now we cut back to Victor. Remember the suicidal kid that this movie isn't about who shows up at Becky's house just begging for the V? Yeah, and he basically acts like suicidal thoughts are turning into a werewolf. He shows up <laughs> and he's like, I, I, I'm just coming to say goodbye. I don't want to hurt you or anyone else. I need to chain myself to a tree in the forest. I'm going to tear my clothes. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, this movie's, this movie's idea of what it's like to have depression is amazing. Yeah, having depression is all about going and telling people that you're very depressed and explaining your symptoms to them in detail. That's how depression works. Well, he just needs a bigger dose of comic books. I think he would be helped Quick, by he that. he needs 10 cc's of Spider-Man spec. <laughs> Also, the the little Christian girl's reaction to this is she goes, but I forgave you, remember? And he's like, yeah, for some reason, your forgiveness didn't cure my depression. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> right. And again, we're supposed to be looking at this movie and thinking, ah, last thing that kid needs is antidepressants, all right? No, you're not fucking right. So she runs after him after he shows up and basically says, there will be a suicide attempt in the near future. But now we need to go back to the meeting where evil atheist dad number one is showing up to interrupt uh, uh, Stephen Baldwin's soliloquy about his dead wife and how much Jesus is awesome or whatever uh, to give him a what for about his son running off and thinking he can use the Bible instead of medication. Right. But instead of voicing that, he just comes in and is like, your daughter made my son depression. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah, so they, they, they're like, you know, trying to figure out where they could be because they know that they're together and she forgot her phone when she ran off or whatever. And, and, and he's like, they're probably at Jefferson Park. And I'm like, what's the worst thing that could happen at Jefferson Park, guys? Come on. So, oh, he's going to add on her. <laughs> <laughs> to add <Adnan. laughs> It's a verb. <laughs> also, while they're driving around, the atheist dad's like, you know, we had a nice, quiet, all atheist neighborhood before you and your wife moved in, just sucking and fucking and teaching our kids to murder people. It was great. It was fucking great. <laughs> you fucked it all up. 
But we also get the uh, so it cuts over to the to the daughter like still running around looking. I'm like she left the house three seconds after him, but yet she's running to find him or whatever. This happens for the rest of the movie because whenever he's not in her sightline, this girl doesn't have object permanence because whenever he's not in her sightline, she immediately starts being like, "Oh my, Victor, Victor!" <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, she runs like eight feet later to catch up with him or whatever. <laughs> but also, can we just talk about what a bizarrely bucolic backdrop this scene has? Right? Because they're they're standing in front of a duck pond while he's contemplating suicide. It's like it's like I'm going to jump into the duck pond. <laughs> into the pond. Right? <laughs> so and he's, duck just turns to him. Excuse me, this isn't for you. <laughs> this is our pond. Do you want some bread? You seem bummed. You should take your medication. I'm a duck. I'm a duck. <laughs> and he's angrily skipping rocks that's not an appropriate <laughs> no. action it's like angrily twisting up balloon animals pissed <laughs> off like, what your motherfucker take this doggy <laughs> it's a bird on a wire <laughs> well he does get garbage can kicking mad at one point though so there's at least that mm-hmm. and so yeah now they're gonna they're, they're driving around um looking for the kids or whatever stevie and evil atheist dad number one and Stephen Baldwin is like, now uh, your son is mentally ill, so is he gonna is he gonna hurt my daughter? And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a great that's a great image to reinforce right there that people is- who have depression are violent murderers. Yeah, I heard your kid has depression. That's the same thing as as the guy who ate the face of the bath salts, right? Is that it? <laughs> When, when will we be able to reclaim her body from his organs? <laughs> <laughs> Do I got to wait for him to poop her out? <laughs> I heard your kid has ADD. <laughs> Don't let him near anything sharp. <laughs> Stephen Baldwin, I'm the worst Baldwin. <laughs> I never opened my eyes up because I'd see myself... <laughs> Also, I love, too, that, like, the dad, the evil atheist dad, at one point, he goes, like, uh, no, I know this is bad because he left a suicide note. I'm like, it, you probably could have brought that up right away. Lead yeah, with right that away. That's away. That's priority one. Before you say how nice the neighborhood was before he and his wife move in. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> also, this is where we cut to the kids, and they're literally doing the Megan sketch from Key and Peel. Like, she's following him, and she's like, Victor, don't. Victor, and she's like, no, no. <laughs> Just for like 12 minutes, she just follows him and she's like, Victor, Victor, Victor. <laughs> well, and, and, okay, so yeah, she's trying to talk him out of his depression and he tells her that he's that he's going to kill himself and she goes, well, if you kill yourself, you don't go to heaven. Like, really? That's what you got? Yeah, yeah the Bible's yeah. all about suicide prevention. Uh, well, <laughs> except when the main character committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else don't, spoilers, don't do that. Spoilers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Almost <laughs> guaranteed most of these people haven't read it. Yeah. Or, or heard of it. <laughs> or even seen one before. She, um, she also uh, tells him that she says, God answers prayers in all different ways. <laughs> like, for me, he killed my mom. Tricky, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a thinky one. That's a thinky one. But right. just, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Right. And her response when he's, his response is, to that is, God never says anything back to me. Like, I, dude, no one has sold that that's how prayer works. No one has sold that prayer is a walkie-talkie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say no one, but yeah, yeah, exactly. There are a few African pastors, I'm sure, that would probably sell you one. Um, so now we show up at this... Okay, we show up at this bridge that he's going to throw himself off of. And again, he gets there by running away from her when they're standing next to each other somehow. Like, he lost her again in a crowd of zero people <laughs> in a wide open park. And then she's like, oh, you were straight ahead of me. You were straight ahead of me. I, <laughs> I swear. This is broad daylight straight ahead. I hadn't looked straight ahead. you from there. And this bridge is about a foot taller than Heath. Like, yeah, he, right. If if he falls from his full height, he's done the jump that this character is threatening to kill himself with. Yeah, I broke my leg doing that when I was a kid. Yeah, about, yeah well, about that, my height. But that's the thing. Yes, this is an ankle breaking type of jump if you don't roll out of it, or spiral fracture if you're a little bit heavier. Whatever. <laughs> don't be an asshole. I'm just saying we could set a Patreon goal for me to jump off this bridge. I'm okay with. It. I don't need my legs anymore. <laughs> There's also this great moment where he's like, I vandalized your dad's classroom. I must stop before the monster vandalizes again. <laughs> right. It's like fucking M. <laughs> There's just no hope for him. 
Yeah, but she wants, so he stands up on the railing. So now he's like almost twice as high because he's on top of the railing. But she wants him to pray with her before he commits suicide. So she starts praying to God for him to not kill himself. And then he doesn't kill himself. So there is a God. Turns out there was a God the whole time. Clever yeah. little twist this at is the, the end. I bet I can't suck my own dick. Here you try it of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> can't reach. All right, your turn. Science. <laughs> Yvette won't return my Facebook messages anymore. <laughs> so much for Psy, babe. I'm just I just wanted to just like push him over the edge of the bridge and then like, see, you're fine. I prayed for you. And it's <laughs> six feet. See? Yeah, right, right. Also, yeah, exactly. Christianity works. Stung, didn't it? Um, and then we, so, and, and right at the same time that he's like deciding not to jump or whatever, the dads are walking up. So now we get some very awkward hugs where both Lorenzo Lamas and Stephen Baldwin seem way too happy to hug these underage, uh, uh, actors that they're working with. Right. And Lorenzo Lamas' very clear Jesus tattoo is only barely concealed by his t-shirt. Like you can yes. see the thorns, you can see the cross. There's just like a crucifix picking out from underneath it. And he's like, no, no, nope, nope. I got this tiny t-shirt covering half of it. <laughs> there could, that could be any guy nailed to a tree <laughs> with a with a thorny uh, crown on. Yeah, no, I got it can... when I was standing upside down at the tattoo place. <laughs> <laughs> That's an atheist thing you wouldn't understand. I lift my arm up a lot, so <laughs> yeah. So and now we're gonna we're gonna finish this movie off with one last trip to Bible Club. Victor Garnier Fructis is now the Bible Club leader, so he's gonna read him the whole. God is your armor, Jesus is your shield thing from Ephesians. From, from Ephesians, which is not on the last fucking page of the Bible. Just one time. Just <laughs> get it right. Go to the right page. Why, I mean, if you're doing why not actually read the Bible if that's what your character is doing? Like, It's like they memorized the lines from the Bible, but then they're like, I'm going to improvise the opening of the book part. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy with that. <laughs> what? Also, this is just a crazy moment, too. This is shitty clumsy prose this is like this is oh, the yes. first draft of a lord of the rings fan fiction and <laughs> it is what this movie has to end with right because they're just like oh let your your hat of righteousness and the coat of not jerking off in public like it's just so <laughs> really boring and stupid and this movie has to be like wow poetry like shakespeare took angry shits and came out with better prose than this stuff but they have to act like this is what we got it's this or the i really want to fuck you poems what do you got for me plus shakespeare had a bunch of other people taking shits for him so <laughs> That's i am not having this fight with you on air <laughs> Uh, and how many things, how many times do you think they had to recut this scene because he would finish the passage and then Stephen Baldwin would come out and be like, and that's a wrap. No, Stephen, no. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. He takes his mic out from his shirt. No. Let go of the boom, Stephen. Let go of it. <laughs> Let go of it. Well, right, because we have to end this with like, oh, so he, he gets done with this little reading. And oh, by the way, Everyone's dad also comes to Bible club at the high school now, too. Yeah. That's weird. But as do a variety of other adults we've never met. This place is fucking packed, and they couldn't, I guess, get enough high school age kids or whatever, so they had to just start <laughs> filling it in with <laughs> random characters from Everybody, earlier in the, the movie. mom's there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Yoda so, and Obi-Wan, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so they get to the end uh, of his little reading, and they clap for him for, like, 29 minutes, like, forever, right? The movie, like, slowly ends here with everybody clapping unrealistically by TED Talk standards. <laughs> and then they close it out with some music from American Family Radiohead, which was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, all, all the thumbs are down and none of the stars. So now that we have that over with, I want to close with a suggestion, right? Okay, so not a sequel necessarily, but like an idea for this production company where they could go next. So do you guys have any ideas for like terrible medical advice movie scripts that you'd like to pitch to the uh, to the Nasser group? Ooh, um, okay. What about, uh, what about a Little League coach who uh, gets his whole town to stop taking vaccinations and... Uh, and we watched them die slowly of measles. Uh, Wakefield of dreams. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I, I, how about um, uh, 
One man realizes that his local Buddhist temple has found the secret to curing cancer and its salt pills. Brzezinski's Buddhists. <laughs> hmm? Hmm? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So we can just go ahead and write those in on the notes for 2017. <laughs> and well, that does it for our review of God's Club. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to make you want to shout for next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. The Unexpected Bar Mitzvah. Finally. <laughs> oh, we've been waiting on this one for a while. Yeah, first line of this preview. It shows a little kid looking at his parents and saying, that's why I've chosen to witness to the Jewish community. <laughs> <laughs> that was the nicest way they're going to say Jewish people for the rest of the <laughs> It's also really weird to watch because we've watched... A bunch of racist portrayals, but it's really weird to watch, uh, Jew face in action. Mm -hmm. Cause this is very clearly actors being like, well, I want the Jew to be well represented in this movie. Like they're hiding their 88 tattoos to really <laughs> nail this. They're applying some Stanislavski <laughs> here. What would it be like to be on the outside of the oven? I mean, the inside, oh, the God. inside. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say, my jaw has never been more agape at a preview for one of these movies. This is gonna be fucking amazing. I was honestly more blown away by this than the preview for Loving the Bad Man. Yeah. I cannot fucking wait for next week. I mean, I, I, I don't know how excited the audience is. I've never been more excited about a new episode. So with all that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 56 to a merciful close. Once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us out a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the links on the show notes to this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work harder and earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The Breakfast Club both have a word club close. Netflix got sued when investigators found out that The Masked Saint and this movie were the last two things watched by Chris Benoit. <laughs> Victor was sentenced to death for the Boston Marathon bombing. <laughs> the people in that room never stopped clapping. They just clapped and clapped until they starved to death. Take your fucking man. <laughs> Chris Wong, Ben Wong did the Boston bombing. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.